For this video, our focus is on economics, specifically the law of demand and the law of supply. Two very important, very connected concepts in economics. Let's go ahead and begin with, on the left, the law of demand. As you can see, we have a graph here with a y and x axis. Now, we're going to go ahead and label those axes P and Q. Now, you might be wondering, why P and why Q? Why not X and Y? Well, I'll explain that in a little bit, but for now, let's assume, or rather pretend, that we are a firm. And as a firm, we produce goods. And let's say that we produce baseballs. We may not produce the highest quality baseball, but for my self-esteem and for this example, let's go ahead and assume that we are producing an average, good quality baseball. Now, back to what P and Q mean. P stands for price. It's going to be the price of our good. In this case, how many dollars per baseball? So imagine down here being around zero dollars and up here being like 10, 15, 20 dollars per baseball. Some really high price that we probably won't pay ever for a baseball unless we had to. And as a firm, we want to know how changing this price will affect Q, or quantity. Now, when we're talking about the law of demand, quantity is going to mean quantity demanded. Again, when we talk about the law of demand, quantity is going to mean quantity demanded of our consumers. For example, if we price way up here at $20, how many baseballs are our consumers going to demand? Well, honestly, if I was paying $20 for a baseball, I'd, I wouldn't buy a single one, but there might be a few people who might buy one, maybe two. Now, if the price of baseballs was way down here at like a penny per baseball, then our consumers will probably demand a lot of baseballs, maybe 50 or 100 or 200 or 1,000, million, etc., etc. I'm pretty sure that kind of illustrates the concept here. And that's why we represent this with a graph, is because we can draw this out as the demand curve. Assume this is a straight line. When our price is higher, we can see that quantity demanded, because we're talking about law of demand here, quantity demanded is actually lower. A really high price coordinates to a really low quantity demanded. Vice versa, a really low price translates to a very high quantity demanded, like I used in the baseball example. Now, this means as P increases, D, uh, Q, or in this case QD for quantity demanded, decreases. And likewise, as P decreases, Q increases. I've color coded this to kind of make it a little bit easier to understand. So as P increases, our quantity demand is going to get smaller. And as P gets smaller, quantity demanded is going to get larger. Now, is this the case for the law of supply? Well, let's go ahead and label our supply curve on the right. Just like we labeled it on the left-hand side with price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Except this time, instead of being quantity demanded, we're looking at quantity supplied. When talking about the law of supply, quantity means the quantity supplied by the firm. So us in this case. So how many baseballs are we going to produce when the price is super high? Or if the price is $10 per baseball, how many baseballs are we going to produce and supply to the consumers? Well, this is illustrated by the supply curve. Very similar to the demand curve. So as price increases, say price is $10 per baseball. Well, then we're going to want to produce more baseballs because the more baseballs we sell, 
the greater revenue we'll have. And at higher prices, we get more revenue per product. But there's also a catch to this. As we produce more, our cost of production start to increase. So we have to balance it out, which we'll learn in a later lesson. And then just like the law of demand, the law of supply has a couple relationships. As P decreases, as we can see here, quantity decreases. So if quantity price were to decrease down to $1 per baseball, we wouldn't supply very many baseballs because why would we? We might not even make a profit. But if we raise the price to $10, or if the market sets the price at $10, we'd produce a way out here to maybe like 100 or 200 or 1,000 baseballs because we can because we can sell them at a higher price and we're seeking a higher return on our production. And since we have this more production, we're going to have to charge a higher price to offset our production costs. Now, what are the technical terms for these relationships? Well, for the law of demand, it's an indirect relationship, as we can see right here on the canvas. And that just means as one increases, the other decreases and vice versa. And you can see that down here and on the graph, as P increases, quantity demanded, or Q, decreases. And as P, or price, decreases on the graph, quantity demanded increases on the graph. And for the law of supply, as price decreases, quantity supplied also decreases, as we can see on the curve, and vice versa. As price increases, quantity supply also increases. Now, this ends our video and our lesson on the law of demand and law of supply. Next video, we're going to talk a little bit about equilibrium. So if you're interested in learning more about economics and the law of demand and law of supply, make sure you stay tuned for the next video, and I'll see you there.